The trains taking them east were taking them to their deaths. The One Sea Conference in January 1942 was the birth of Hitler's final solution. Segregating the Jewish population had proven unsuitable and quietly, secretly in the background, the Third Reich began erecting concentration camps to determine their fate. The journey by rail to Auschwitz and other extermination camps during the Holocaust was harrowing and inhumane. Unimaginable conditions marked the extreme cruelty and inhumanity of the Holocaust. The train journeys to the concentration camps were just the beginning of the horrors many would face. Join us today as we take an unblinking look at the harsh realities and startling deceptions of the deportation of the Jewish people to the concentration camps. While they would become synonymous with the Holocaust of the Jewish people, the train routes across the German interior and beyond were not initially used for such at the outbreak of the war. The architecture of what became the Holocaust was already seen in deportations before the war. In October 1938, some 17,000 Polish Jews were arrested and deported from Germany. In a chilling sample of Europe's relationship with its Jewish population, Poland rejected them and made them live in encampments along the border. Proto-refugee camps were in use before the outbreak of the war in the expulsion of the Jewish people and they were evicted by rail. This began a pattern of expulsion across Europe, with Slovakia deporting many of its Jewish population in November of 1938 and Hungary following suit the following month. Railways began to pick up considerable usage with the establishment of Jewish ghettos in occupied Poland. Hundreds of locations were selected of differing characteristics, all with the purpose of segregating the Jewish population. In smaller Polish towns, Jews were subjected to slave labor off the back of their mass deportations. Ghettos and more built-up urban areas in Poland closer resembled walled-off prison blocks amid cities. Here, the Polish Jewish population would face inhumane conditions, including a lack of food, which they were dependent on the SS for. Exploitation and eventual death would befall them at the hands of Reinhard Heydrich's Einsatzgruppen. Ghettos were reported to have dead bodies scattered across the street. From October 1939 to July 1942, the ghettos confined some 3.5 million Jewish people. Yet concurrently, the Nazis were secretly building extermination camps. Come 1942, the ghettos began to be cleared out and their populations were once again placed on trains. For many, it would be for the final time. The Grand Deception, Resettlement to the East. The deportation of Jewish, Roma, and other persecuted parties under Nazi auspices was given a chilling euphemism. The victims in question were told they had been selected for resettlement to the east by the Nazis. Using the Deutsche Reichsbahn railway across the breadth of Germany and into occupied territories to transport populations to the constructed extermination camps. A huge element of bringing the Nazi final solution into happening was the use of deception. From 1942, Adolf Eichmann would hire trains for transporting victims to concentration camps. One-way fares were demanded of the victims, unknowingly traveling to their deaths. A whole network of lies made the deception possible. Guards would tell the deported Jews that they were being relocated to work. Receipts were given for their tickets, and they were even granted a luggage allowance. Consistently, deported Jews and populations from the ghettos, they were told that they were being evacuated. This would imply a degree of protection to the victims. Their children could travel for free, but nearly all were traveling to their deaths. The granted luggage allowance of the resettlement was packed separately, and more often than not, left at the very station it was taken from. Yet it's scarcely imaginable what was going through the minds of these disoriented and deceived people when they witnessed the very transports they were loaded onto. Cattle wagons were the choice of the Nazis to transport people to their deaths. Never designed to carry human beings, promising to carry a load of only 50 people, the Nazis would cram 100 to 150 people into the wagons at a time. Then, on the promise of relocation, on the premise of evacuation, their fateful journeys began. Catabases on Earth, Ghettos to Death Camps. The cattle wagons were labeled Zonderzuga, meaning special trains. Yet, considering their human cargo, they had the lowest of priority on the rails. The transport time would be expanded and extended with no consideration of the human beings inside. The average transportation time would take around four days. Yet, this could entirely change. The length of the journey was based on the priorities of the Nazis. A train traveling from Corfu 
could take as long as 18 days. When there were not enough cattle cars at the start of the deportations to make up a major shipment, the prisoners could be kept locked inside overnight at shipping yards. Typically, the cattle wagons had no windows, and if there were any, they were small, barred, or sealed, leaving hardly any airflow. This would leave their air stifling, and come summertime, dehydration was inevitable for victims of the evacuation. Worsening this dire situation, the wagons had no sanitary considerations whatsoever, only a bucket in the corner of the cart for over 100 people. So disease and illness were rapid and would spread like wildfire. Much like the conditions faced in the ghettos, a starvation diet was enforced on the passengers with a minimal amount of calories afforded, barely enough to keep a person alive, and neither was water available. While summertime could bring extreme duress to this cramped, unfolding nightmare, wintertime was of equal danger to the passengers. Temperatures could reach below freezing with no heating in the wagons and no access to clothing but what the people had on them. While it's clear that Reichsbahn, no matter how it was euphemized, was transporting people to their deaths, the journey itself was the cause of many. The forced overcrowding made sitting impossible, and this alone caused unbearable distress to the sick, the elderly, and many children. As the journeys were deprioritized and took a leisurely time to reach their destinations, an inevitable death rate aboard the train would increase. Dehydration could lead to fainting, which in turn lead to a loss of consciousness, which in turn led to death. Many deaths occurred simply from exposure to the elements at the peak of summer and winter. Estimates state that some 500,000 Jews died of starvation and disease in the ghettos alone. Many would be emaciated and ill before they even began these journeys. The only possible relief the faded souls in these cattle carts received was the removal of corpses on the infrequent train stops on the way to their death camp destinations. The Final Destination The specter of distress and panic upon the Jewish people in these transports is unfathomable. As the journeys towards the death camps unfolded and exhaustion, illness, and death set in, these people had nothing to support them. Railway operators and railway men were at no point available to help or change the grim conditions they faced. It was commonplace for those in the resettlement to the east to be separated from their families before setting off on a journey with no knowledge of their destination or their own. Exorbitant anxiety, fear, and emotional trauma befell those on these grim train journeys before any illness or disease set in. A horrendous sense of being deceived, of being out of one's depth, would also have been unfolding in their interactions with the SS guards. Should the train stop during their journeys, prisoners on these trains could expect to be assaulted and robbed by SS officers. Should a prisoner realize the dire extent of these journeys and attempt escape during a stop, they would be shot. The trains traveled to the death camps constructed in secret across Poland at Majdanek, Belzec, Treblinka, and Auschwitz-Birkenau. Having witnessed days of physical decimation and death crammed in among a sea of strangers in sanitary dire conditions, the prisoners would arrive at their concentration camps. Disturbingly, even with these horrendous realities staring the prisoners in the face, the deception upon them would continue on approach, or even at their arrival. Some passengers were given postcards by SS officers with a pre-written message about a prosperous resettlement. Both Treblinka and Sobibor camps had fake stations at the camps with signs, flowers, and even a bogus station clock to keep up the lie about these people. Yet arrival at the camps would bring an entirely different tone, one not straddling a perverse sense of unreality. SS guards and officers would hurry these ill and sick prisoners off their trains, more often than not screaming and shouting commands at them. Off the trains, the prisoners were instantly to undergo a selection process. Any young, sick, elderly, or infirm who managed to survive the ordeal were typically separated from the rest of the passengers to be shot. All the remaining survivors of the diabolical Holocaust trains were organized to be sent to the gas chambers. As many as 15,000 Jewish lives were taken per day in the gas chambers, all after the inhumane ordeal of the Holocaust trains. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.